Hello, it's Jeff Cohen, and I'm here today with Jennifer Dunn with TaxJar. Jennifer, there is a lot of buzz going on about sales tax amnesty, and I just want to answer a couple quick questions for the audience. So the first one is, what is sales tax amnesty? Just from a high level, what, what does that mean? Uh, great question. Sales tax amnesty is when a state agrees that someone who may owe money in back sales tax does not have to pay that back sales tax as long as they will start collecting and paying sales tax in the future. So sales tax amnesty is good for someone. If you maybe you didn't know you had a sales tax obligation, you're afraid that you owe a lot of money in back sales tax, then you can take advantage of an amnesty with a state and have that slate wiped totally clean. Okay, so there is a there's a commission. Um, I think it's called the MTC. Multi-state tax commission, yes. Okay, the multi-state tax commission. And the multi-state tax commission attended the Prosper show and they kind of learned of this issue that all that a lot of Amazon sellers have. Can yes. you kind of walk through kind of what happened after that show and how this kind of amnesty program got developed? Well, sure. So the Richard Cram, who was from the Multi-State Tax Commission, he was a speaker at the Prosper show. And while he was there, he talked to a lot of sellers and he realized that, well, I, you know, I can't put words in his mouth, but I think he realized that states don't do a good job of letting sellers know what their sales tax liability is. So as the head of a commission whose job is to help states make sales tax uh, more simple and more easy from the side of both the, the retailer and the state, uh, he apparently got the, the brainwave to uh, make this a little easier. So he pushed and worked with as many states as he could possibly get to work with him to offer this amnesty for FBA sellers so they can both not be you know, put out of business if they owe that much in back tax, but also um, get sales tax compliant and then you know, be able to sleep at night knowing that they're, they're sales tax compliant. So the sales tax amnesty, what are the dates of the sales tax amnesty? It's, this is kind of an evolving thing, but right now the dates are August 17th through October 17th. So you do have a couple of months um, to talk to your CPA, to look at your books, to decide if this is something that you want to do. Just um, you know, keep keep looking in case the dates change. Um, they're trying to get some more states to get involved with this. And right now there are only 13 states. Only six of those have Amazon fulfillment centers. So they're not, you know, they, they're hoping to have more Amazon fulfillment center states, especially the big ones like California and Washington, the guys who really, you know, can be very aggressive when it comes to sales tax for Amazon FBA sellers. Okay. So I'm an Amazon seller. Um, I want to do what? I want to look up where I have sales tax liability. Exactly. You want to find out where your inventory is stored in Amazon fulfillment centers because that creates sales tax nexus. And then you also, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, you want to see how much sales tax liability you had in the past. Maybe you've only ever made $20 worth of sales to South Carolina. You may not want to um, sign up for the amnesty there. You may want to just wait on South Carolina. On the other hand, maybe in Texas, which is a state I'm very excited about, is taking part in the amnesty. Uh, maybe you owe them $10,000 in back sales tax. If Texas comes after you and audits you after this amnesty period is, is over, they could charge you the $10,000 plus fines and penalties and interest. So, you know, that could, that could be a business breaking fine that you receive from Texas. So that's when I would recommend definitely taking advantage of the amnesty. Now, of course, it's up to you and you need to talk to your CPA or any advisors that you have about this. But I, I, I think it's going to be a really good deal for some Amazon FBA sellers. So there's currently 13 states that are participating. I think you said only six of them have Amazon fulfillment centers, but understand that you could have nexus in a state for other reasons, right? So if you have staff or if you hire a VA, um, you, you could have, there are other ways that you can create nexus within a state. So don't just think that if you don't have inventory, you don't have nexus. That's right. Uh, the other thing is, is that this is what big companies do, right? So big companies go out and they create amnesty with the states and then they kind of clean the slate and move forward. And so what the multi-state tax commission did was they basically said collectively, we're all one big organization and therefore we're going to help all of these small sellers kind of push their way forward and move through and navigate this. Now, big question, this happened now, will it happen again? It very well may. Um, so I've written about sales tax amnesty a lot in the past and, and it's, I've never written about one that was the, like a conglomerate of states like this, but individual states will offer amnesties. 
So yes, they definitely will. So if that's something, if you're like, mm, I think I'm going to ignore this one, I'll maybe do this in the future. Well, it might happen again. That said, I think this took about six months to put together um, for all the states to get on the same page. And then of course we have eight states that are still trying to get on the same page in the next two weeks. So this was not easy. So you may find an amnesty in an individual state in the future, but I am not sure that, you know, something this big will happen again. I mean, maybe if it's very successful, states will be more ready to get on board. Uh, this is sort of a new animal under the sun. I think, you know, my general opinion, you, you're in this business and in, in the tax side of the business much more than I am. But my general opinion is um, this is a big opportunity for sellers and sellers have ignored sales tax and have not understood it. And this is your opportunity to wipe your slate clean and move forward doing things the right way and removing business liability. That's really what you're getting rid of is you're getting rid of business liability. Now, let me ask a couple more questions. I want to keep this conversation short. Does Amazon collect the sales tax? So I have to decide that I want amnesty. Then I have to apply with the state to get to, to have a registered state tax ID, then I have to tell Amazon to start collecting the sales tax. And then it's my responsibility to remit the sales tax to that state on some regular period. Is that correct? That is correct. So once you are registered, once you've taken the amnesty and you're registered, then you need to collect from your buyers and remit that sales tax monthly, quarterly, or annually. And the state will tell you when. They'll be really clear about that. Right. And my, and, and my liability that I talked about earlier was that if I don't collect that sales tax, but I owe the sales tax, it comes out of my pocket. Exactly. Yes. So Does Amazon charge to collect sales tax? They do. They charge 2.9% of all sales tax collected. So if you, if you charge $10 in sales tax, there's going to be a 29 cent fee on that. Okay. So Amazon is charging for the sake of collecting sales tax. And then they remit that to me with just my normal payment. Exactly. They don't, they don't remit it separately. It's just in your payment. So you won't know exactly like, oh, this percentage was sales tax. This percentage was just my sales. So, so if I'm collecting sales tax, then my bookkeeper needs to be aware of that. My bookkeeper needs to um, account for that properly. And then I need to be paying the individual states based on the sales tax collected. That is absolutely right. Okay. So um, got about one or two minutes left. What else as a seller do I need to worry about or do I need to be thinking about between now and the end of this amnesty program um, to, to take best advantage of it? Well, there are a couple things. The first thing is your your past sales tax liability. Look at that. Say if you owe a lot of money in the past, this could be your chance to wipe the slate clean. The second thing is your future. Uh, do you plan to sell your business ever? Is this just a lifestyle for you or is this something you're really wanting to build up? The more serious you are about your business, and I know we're all serious about our business, even if we just plan to use it to retire. But the more if you plan to have a future for your business or pass it on to your children, uh, you need to be very compliant with sales tax. Gotcha. Jennifer Dunn with uh, TaxJar. Uh, there's a lot of information at TaxJar.com and follow their blog. We'll obviously be keeping information updated here on the Seller Labs blog. Thank you for joining us and uh, we will continue to share information as it's available. Thanks guys.